So we're about to talk about the gays. The gays. The gays are always this uh, topic now that we have all of, all of the tug of war over what people should think based on all sorts of things that they do and are that have nothing to do with their personal thoughts and opinions, okay? Now, we're going to introduce the topic, and then we're I'm kind of going to kind of talk about my personal perspective on this issue, which, which I think is um, just, uh, I can't believe that this actually made it into Deadspin. But this is from Lauren Thyssen. And you can see she has she does do a lot of sports articles for Deadspin. I don't know why this was in Deadspin. I think that <clears throat> if she wanted to put forward an opinion like this, it doesn't belong in a sports blog. Which, by the way, if you really think about it, uh, Deadspin is part of the Jezebel family of uh, of of uh, what's it? Jezebel and Gizmodo family of sites. I think they're, they're the ones who bought up the Gawker property back in the day and i don't know exactly why media com companies keep buying each other because you're not really gaining anything in the end uh, because they're all basically evaporating similar to what's probably going to be happening um or, or is already in the progress over at the blaze slash crtv the blaze bought crtv and it's basically uh, unraveling before our eyes most of their best talent just seems to be ditching the company. Uh, Dan Bongino, apparently, from what I heard, will probably not be staying with uh, the Blaze. So, Blaze TV, whatever. So this this woman, Lauren Thyssen, uh, she looks like this. She publishes this article that says, Conservative gays need to shut the fuck up. On Tuesday, conservative rag the Federalist, a website perhaps best known for its endorsement of statutory rape and its former use of a black crime tag. So, so which one are they talking about with statutory rape? So, they want. She, so she was talking about the Roy Moore controversy. Um, and. Yeah, I think that this this is kind of a dumb opinion, but the fact of the matter is that there was never any proof that Roy Moore ended up dealing any doing anything. Uh, and and then um, so they said they published an opinion blog by a gay guy named Chad Felix Green titled "The Stigma Against My Conservative Politics Is Worse Than the Stigma of Being Gay." That's good news, right? I mean, in a utopian society, nobody would much care who other people prefer to fuck or fall in love with. But everyone would care deeply about the laws and policies that actually impact the world. So she, she's actually she's making a point in a very blunt way. She's saying, uh, look, in a, in a great in, 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 the, in the correct society, a society that's true, you wouldn't get you wouldn't care about certain issues like how, um, you know, who, who has sex with who you would care about more important issues such as uh, wars and, and, and budgets and things like that. But actually, she has to remember that she's writing for Deadspin. So <laughs> the Deadspin, I think they're the, the, the one thing story I remember Deadspin the most for is when they exposed Brett Favre for, for sexting uh, whatever that reporter's name was. The one, she, she was... Um, she was when he worked at the Jets. I don't remember her name. I can't believe it now. But, uh, yeah, uh, maybe it was Jen Sturger. Uh, if, if somebody if somebody can look that up, you can put it in the comments. I think it was Jen Sturger. So <laughs> that that was the big story I remember from Deadspin. And other than that, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to really think about them. I know that one of the radio hosts I listen to, Clay Travis, hates them, and they hate him. And they pick any opportunity they can to dump on him because they, you know, they're they're kind of what I would call this, um, you know, this chicken coop of, of journalism. Okay, these they're just chickens. They're not they're not actual uh, birds of prey because they pretend that they're publishing quality stories, but in reality they're kind of like the Vice magazine of of journal of of uh, sports journalism, meaning that they they used to publish 
real stories of substance, and now they're kind of publishing crap that is, uh, you know, it's 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 the mar hallmark of people who went, wanted to go into journalism because it's cool, not because it actually uh, reveals any information that benefits society. So she says, what I'm saying is conservative politics should be, have more of a stigma than being queer, but apparently my saying so hurts Green's feelings. I often fantasize about breaking through the walls of prejudice and somehow speaking to the heart of someone who not yet realized I was just a person like them. Today I find myself in the same frame of mind and under the same um, weight of frustration and skepticism. And then he says it's not because he's gay. Today I look out across the turbulency of political discourse and ask, why would anyone choose to be a conservative? To be a conservative means to openly invite others' hatred into your life and to lose your humanity in the eyes of strangers who view you exclusively through stereotypes and prejudices. Putting aside the, aside the obvious irony of Green using a decently prominent platform to complain about his political marginalization in a country where a majority of the government is conservative, this is insufferable. It's a cynical guy perverting an, an extremely valid I, should have, I shouldn't have to justify my love to the world take and twisting it into I don't like when people argue with me on the internet because I sympathize with a very successful accused sexual predator. This, this, is, this is somebody who is, if, if you are writing in the world of sports you and you try to put that opinion out there, you're really taking a huge risk. Because, and why do I say that? Because somebody like Lauren Thiessen, 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 I don't, I don't know how to pronounce her name. She's writing about a lot of these athletes who themselves are uh, accused sexual predators. Uh, it, if you went back to the 90s, it wasn't uh, Mike Tyson convicted of rape uh, in a very questionable trial, but still. Uh, you, you have a lot of these athletes are accused of rape. There are actual rape cases that go on in sports um, context is uh, actually earlier this year, people were accusing Jim Jordan not of raping anybody, but of not, ignoring people's complaints about a sexual assault by a certain uh, coach on his pro or no, I think it was the, the athletic doctor on his, on the wrestling team team where he used to coach. Now the fact was that with Jim Jordan's case, the person in question died in 2006 so they were just bringing it up 12 years later in order to make him look bad because he's one of the more aggressive panelists on some of these important subcommittees. But, you know, the, the, the fact is that you, you see in sports, you see a lot of instances of, of gross sexual assault. I think in, in, in Baylor University, under Art Bryles, there was a lot of sexual assault going on by student athletes that, uh, you know, they, they, they really crossed the line. So... You know, she, she's basically having to deal with the fact that there are a lot of athletes who are accused of sexual assault, and not all of them are, turn out to be actually guilty. Is she assuming that Ezekiel Elliott, who was accused last year of sexual assault, is guilty? Because if she is, then she's going to have a hard time relating to some of these athletes who may know people like Ezekiel Elliott or have friends of a similar situation that were accused of rape or sexual assault. Um, so she, she just keeps going on saying normally the Federalist farting out the, some jaw droppingly stupid false equivalence is just another weekday, but conservative gays using their sexuality as a means to defend their abhorrent views have become more and more common as queers win more widespread acceptance. Some possibly relevant personal, personal background, <laughs> She says she identified as a gay male during her teen years, but now I'm probably more like trans female or genderqueer or something more fun. So I don't know if she's joking or not, but the fact is that she she's changing her opinion all the time on these things. So why should she care what, what this guy thinks? Th th this is somebody who is basically like a certain YouTuber whose name you can't mention because uh, he, she tries to block you for whatever, but... Um, if you don't have a concrete answer about certain basic issues in your life, uh, people have the right to doubt you. People have the right to doubt your sincerity. People have the right to, to think that, that you don't have it all together, which, which apparently she doesn't.
Opportunities that would have been previously unavailable for out gays in fields like business or politics are open like never before, giving LGBT people newfound power to create change within the systems that previously oppressed them. But wealthy and mostly white gay men have all too often been afforded the choice not just to shed the, quote, oppressed label, but to become oppressors themselves. Their sexuality then becomes a tool used to help uphold the anti-feminist white supremacist well-favoring status quo, and they need to fucking stop. One of the first, so then they, then she goes in on My, Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, she says he's basically banned from the internet and reportedly d deep in debt at the moment. But back before we all blessedly forgot about him, Yiannopoulos used his relationship and later marriage to a man as a potent cover that allowed him to harass trans kids and do the feminist feminism is camp cancer meme. Not, none of this allows him to do anything. What allows him to the, the internet is a free speech forum, and Ianopolis is not off of the internet. He's been banned. I, be, I believe he's banned from um, from Twitter. I think he's still on YouTube. I've never really followed his uh, channel, to be honest with you. Let me see. Uh, no, yeah, he's he's still on. He's still on YouTube. He has over eight hundred thousand. I've been looking out over the last subscribers. Loss. And, uh, you, you know, that's, the, I mean, I think if he wants to put out his opinions, it's fine. I don't really, I've never had a huge problem with him. Sometimes I'll watch his, his act, which I consider it an act. I don't really know what, what exactly his, his goal is in life. I think a lot of what he does is, is kind of his own, um, performance art. Uh, that's what I find it to be. So I don't see I don't see a problem with him doing it. I think he's kind of tiresome at times, but uh, she she just she just hates this guy. A much more boring example of queer identity allowing other kinds of her, criminal hara of discrimination and harassment comes in the form of barstool sports writer Gay Pat, who gets pejoratively performatively heated about the use of the word faggot in some dumb but previous but obviously not homophobic jokes from seven years ago. Well, apparently doesn't give two shits about his complicity in his boss's on ongoing harassment campaigns against women in sports media. So from Barstool Sports, I believe that there are, there are a number of, um, of, of uh, you know, I don't really know what the story is about that. I think I heard about this a while ago. Um, journalist Robert Silverman has called this homophobic. Ask Gay Pat about that. Barstool founder Dave Portnoy uh, wrote this year after being asked for comment on a story by the Daily Beast. Traitorous, so the, she says, traitorous queers like Pat are the people who help their buddies get away with heinous misdeeds. These awful men couldn't possibly be bigoted in any way if one of their plans is a real live gay ball. So, so this is this all comes on the heel of. Um, so, so. This all comes on the heel of, of the big, uh, you know, Mika Brzezinski. So the the butt boy comment. So apparently Trump even criticized her over that. She called Mike Mike Pompeo a butt boy because he wouldn't uh, appropriately, in her mind, criticize the key, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Uh, but it says Brzezinski was criticizing Pompeo's recent appearance on Fox News in which he avoided questions about Crown Prince Mohammed. She said, are the pathetic deflections that we just heard when Pompeo appeared on Fox and Friends, is that a patriot speaking, speaking or a wannabe dictator's butt boy? Dead serious, I'm asking, are these the words of a patriot? Um, Brzezinski's comments drew the attention Wednesday of Richard Grinnell, the U.S. ambassador to Germany, who is openly gay. Grinnell noted that Brzezinski apologized, but not to gay people. Your words demean, mock, and therefore try to control whole groups by minimizing our humanity. Um, and uh, also on Thursday, Trump tweeted that Brzezinski was not being held to the same standards as conservative commentators who had been criticized for homophobic rhetoric. Rhetoric, And he says, if it was a conservative that said what crazed Mika Brzezinski stated on her show yesterday using a, a certain horrible term, that person would be banned permanently from television. 
A source familiar with the situation who was not authorized to speak publicly said that MSNBC did not plan to discipline Brzezinski and considered the matter resolved. Resolved! So, in reality, th this is, I don't think Trump was trying to get her fired because he, it's, it's actually of benefit to him that Mika Brzezinski and, and, and Morning Joe, Morning Joe Scarborough, the moron, it's of benefit to him that she remain on the air because she she's a empty husk. Nobody cares about what what she says. Her sh her show is probably at this point um, losing a lot of ratings because you know people are just done with the whole Russia fatigue and um, or they're fatigued with the whole Russia nonsense. That's what I'm trying to say. So. She, she goes on this uh, tirade against Mike Pompeo, says something directly homophobic. We don't see much of a reaction from this, um, what's her name? Laura Thyssen about that. Lauren, Lauren Thyssen, I think her name is. So th then these people, she, she just goes on and on and on about, this is not a Deadspin story. Deadspin is supposed to be kind of the gossip rag of the world of sports. And I, I think that was the biggest mistake here. The biggest mistake that I see is that you have people who they mix their personal agenda with perhaps a job that doesn't that doesn't have much to do with it. If you look through Lauren Thyssen's other writings, she does a lot of other topics, especially in hockey for some reason. Yeah, I mean, she must be a hockey fan, you, you would think. Uh, she does a lot of work on some of these so some of these um you know sports topics here she does one of the Rams Bears game from a few days ago uh th then she does this and and defames she says really these fucking guys and uh goes off on on Harold Baines I don't know why people are so up against Harold Baines getting into the Hall of Fame I mean he wasn't I mean I guess I guess you could say that but they you know they they were she's they're complaining she's she she lumps in to a certain extent Lee Smith who before Mariano Rivera was the saves king in baseball he he'd, he'd won he I think he had over 400 saves the closest person to him at the time was Dennis Eckersley who was also an amazing pitcher I I remember Eckersley not I don't so much remember Lee Smith I think he was kind of retiring when I, I was still following baseball very often when I was a kid. So she, she does write a number of, of uh, stories that are really interesting in terms of uh, journalism. But th this is not one. And I think it's, it's a disgrace that they have her on this sports website writing these writing these topics when when, uh, you know, she's supposed to she's supposed to be a sports writer. She's supposed to focus as much as possible on actual sports topics and not on, you know, bull crap that has nothing to do with Deadspin. And Deadspin is not supposed to be a political blog. It's supposed to be just a gossip rag for sports. So they're, they're going to ruin their brand that way. They already have ruined their brand. And, uh, you know, now that we're through this topic, you know, there, there's many ways I could keep going on this, but I'll give you my perspective on the whole gays who are conservative thing now. Uh, I don't understand it. It doesn't make much sense to me. I can't put myself in their spot because, uh, honestly, I've never really thought. Uh, I'll tell you what. My personal history is I, I saw a number of gay people growing up and some of them appear to be just odd people. Uh, there was this one person who used to come to a restaurant that I worked at who was gay. And we used to like crack jokes about it all the time because the guy was like flamboyantly, you know, he's like, hello. And we'd be like, oh, hi, how you doing? And, and you know, we'd sell him, you know, a slice of pizza or something and, and whatever. And, and he'd, he'd try to like interacting with us. And we would, we would like kind of, um, you know, to, to, this was back in the day when making like openly cracking jokes about gays was a hundred percent like laughed at by everybody. Nobody cared about it. Today, you can't, you, 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 you're basically, you can't say anything unless you're somebody like Mika Brzezinski, 
who basically has a, a huge stick shoved up her ass by MSNBC to, to, to toe the party line with them. So as long as she sticks to their agenda, they'll protect her from that. The rest of America, we can't say things like that because it's taken to be, uh, you know, discriminatory. But meanwhile, somebody like, like this Lauren Thyssen can tell actual gay people that they can't have their own opinions. Uh, you, you know, there's other... I, 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 like, when, when people who are not gay interact with gay people. The main problem that I see is that you can't say things that are, uh, you know, they're, they're humorous asides that make light of the fact that they, they are gay or something. That is, in my opinion, the big obstacle to them being fully accepted into society that I, I think that we have a freedom of speech problem. Uh, I mean, when I was in, I went to community college my last year of high school. We had a, we had a CPR class. Not CPR, it was like an EMT training class that I was a part of. Uh, I think it was the only class I was taking, in fact. And uh, the, the instructor was like, a, she was like flat out, no question, she was, she was a lesbian. And she was a fantastic instructor. And she was pretty much, you know, just behaved normally. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to say that, that uh, um, you know, I, I found her to be, you know, attractive. I don't, I, I'd probably say, first of all, she was like in her 40s and 50s or whatever. But when you do a good job and you're able to perform well for the people that, that are, are basically, you know, in, in this case, your students, I don't think people make as much, much of a big deal about something like that. I also had a gym teacher who I'm pretty sure was, she was also, uh, I'm pretty sure she was gay, <laughs> although I'm not sure. I'm not sure entirely. I can't, I can't rely on my instincts totally, but I, I have to, you know, I would say that it's 60-40 or above that she is. But, you know, everybody liked her because she, she could roll really hard on the, on, you know, on the gridiron. She, she actually did play women's football, <laughs> like not professionally, but in an organized league and everything, uh, you know, women's profession, women's tackle football. So for, for young dudes who have a gym teacher like that, who happens to be a woman, yeah, pe people don't have a problem with it necessarily. I don't think that you, you're, they're going to fit in entirely because they're obviously a little different. But I think that if people stopped telling other people what to think and how to behave and, and who to be friends with, we would have a little better of a society. This is a problem with people like Lauren Thyssen, that we, we have in this country a freedom to, of association. I don't tell people who they're supposed to follow and support based on certain identity markers of theirs. You know, obviously, like I happen to be Jewish. I think cer certain Jews who hold certain opinions, they, they, you know, I can't stand them. But I don't tell them to, um, you know, believe in something just because I do. Uh, unfortunately, I think that our society is coming further and further apart because people can't agree to disagree. They can't let it go that somebody happens to have a different perspective on a given topic. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe we're all guilty of it in a certain way, depending on which group we're talking about. So next week, I may have a certain guest on concerning this, who she, she also has a perspective on it, a little closer of a perspective. But uh, yeah, I think I think this this article, Lauren Thyssen can write whatever she wants. I don't know why she was allowed to put this on Deadspin. It, it's, it just doesn't seem in, like like it's fitting for the blog. And, and the, the piece itself is, is pretty vindictive and bitter. So that's about it. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, share the video. Also, comment when the video uploads. Uh, subscribe to me on CocoScope, also on uh, BitChute, my other channel, Razor Ray Live Wounds. We'll see what's going to happen with that. And uh, all the rest of the social media is below. And I think I will start a subscribe star just for the heck of it, even though... I am not going to delete my Patreon for the time being. Uh, see you guys later and enjoy your weekend because it is already Friday.